Describe him to me. O Muslims, look at the description of your Rasul. And for some, this may be the first time that you hear what your Prophet looked like. I saw a man of striking appearance. Zahir al wazahir Amlaj al wajh Radiant face. Hassan al qayq Beautifully created. Lam ta'ib al His belly wasn't protruding. Nor was his head disproportionate and small. Proportionate and delicate. Finely made a specimen of a creation. His beard was full and thick. In his voice there was a natural echo. His voice was audible and clear to everyone around him. And, his, and the talk that he used to say, the words, the sahabas, the friends of the Prophet, the companions of the Prophet, they used to hearken what he used to say. The words of the Prophet were so sweet and how he spoke, the way he spoke, it was like pearls and gems and jewels coming out from a necklace flowing magically one after the other which are beautifully polished. The Prophet was like that. His hair was in medium. That is, his hair was not too curly, not too straight, not too wavy. It was in medium. The Prophet him everything, he was in the middle. He was not of a tall height that you, uh, your eye needed to strain to look up at him. Neither was he too small for your eyes to get tedious to look down at him. He was in the middle. That is, he was a comfortable sight to look at. From afar, if you see the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, it would be the most outstanding and the most beautiful people in your appearance. And if the Prophet وسلم, came close to you, he would it would be the best, most beautiful, most handsome person in closeness. Even though the Prophet وسلم, was so handsome, his handsomeness was covered with waqar and jalal and haiba. This is the reason why he did not have the similar problem that Prophet Yusuf had. The face of the Prophet was so beautiful, so beautiful, and the Prophet was mind-bogglingly handsome. His eyebrows were arced. They were not joined. It was separated. His neck was also elegantly long. The voice of the Prophet, he was not too nervous, too shy, to. Uh, say his things around the people. He was a public speaker. He was like a public speaker. The Sahaba that he used to sit around the Prophet and at his feet, they said that two feelings conflicting come to the heart. The first feeling that you want to look up at the Prophet and see the majesty and the splendor of his face. But when you just look up, shyness used to overtake you and you used to look down. Anas ibn Malik says, in the desert, on a full moon night, I saw the moon. It was beautiful. Understand in the desert, it is a beautiful sight. The moon is a beautiful sight to look at with the stars. And it looks very, really very pretty. The light of the moon is illuminated throughout the desert. So the moon is a really very comfortable sight to look at. So he was just staring at the moon and the thought came into him. That it is in Anas ibn Malik. He said... Let me see if the moon is more beautiful or my Rasul is more beautiful. Then he looked at the moon, it was beautiful, handsome, gentle, loving, and beautiful. And he said, let me see if this is more beautiful or my Prophet is more beautiful. Then he looked at the Prophet's face. He could see him from afar and he could see his face. It was like his face was, the bout of the radiance was coming to him and he was uh, afar from uh, Anas. And he just saw him, and the radiance was coming till, uh, till here. He narrated this and saw the face of the prophet. He looked at the moon, and he saw the face of the prophet, and he looked at the moon, and he saw the face of the prophet, and he looked at the moon, and he said, "Wallahi, the prophet's face is far more beautiful than the moon and its eternity." Amar ibn As says, I sat with the Prophet many times, but you, if you ask me to describe how the Prophet looked like, I can't describe it. Aisha radiallahu anha says, Once I was sewing with my needle. 
and my needle dropped in the dark. I couldn't find it. So I said, yeah, Rasul, I can't find it. Then the uh, Prophet came close. He brought his face close. And Aisha said, I swear by the bout of the radiance of the Prophet's face, I found my needle. Imagine the nur and the light coming from the face of the Prophet in the dark you could see him from afar. You could see his hands, you could see his face shining like a bright light. The Prophet, uh, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the Prophet really very beautiful. Why? It is because the people should not imitate try to make disguises like them. The Prophet وسلم, even though he considered himself to be really very handsome, but he did not have brightness in his heart. His heart was full of nur, clean, with no black dot spot in it. He was modest, truthful, honest, and was not proud. He was free from all evil things. This is the character of your Rasul. This is the character of your Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a person who wants to become beautiful, who wants to have nur in his face, should make his character in the Quran. This is the reason why Allah praised him in uh, as Bil Qul Al Azim. His name is in the Quran, that is Al Mudassir. So the Mudassir, it's all about the Prophet So I wanted to end my speech by a short nasheed that is about the brief history of the Prophet Among the confusion, the chaos and the pain, a man in Marjan, Muhammad was his name, and walking with nothing but Allah as a say, and the mark of a Prophet between his shoulder blades, in the cave in Mount Hira, the revelation came. Read, O Muhammad, read in Allah's name. May the blessings of Allah be on Al Mustafa. None besides him could have been Al Mustafa. Muhammad, peace be upon his soul. The greatest of prophets, Islam was his only goal. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Among all the prophets, Muhammad was the last As his was a mission of the greatest task That was only moral degeneration People come to idol adoration for all nations he was al muqta so was he praised by Allah al ghaffa so perfect were his moral, so justly did he rule. Darkness had vanished and the world was full of nur. Muhammad, peace be upon his soul. The greatest of prophets, Islam was his only goal. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He pacified In handling the wicked he had the best of skill He pacified with tolerance and goodwill The best of morals he aimed to attain All he accomplished through suffering and pain Reviving Iman as al muqtadir He's known in the Quran as Al Mudassir. Only he was given the honor of Miraj. Unique was this glory to Muhammad as Siraj. Muhammad, peace be upon his soul. The greatest of prophets, Islam was his only goal. Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was a da'i Allah al-Azim, al-Hadi ila siratum mustaqim. His mission completely held in great esteem. Allah praised him as bil khulq al-Azim. May the blessings of Allah be on al-Mustafa. None besides him could have been al-Mujtaba. So perfect were his morals, so justly, so justly did he rule. 
Darkness had vanished and the world was full of noor. Muhammad, peace be upon his soul. The greatest of prophets, Islam was his only goal. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Balagha al-Ula bi kamalihi Kashafat tuja bi jamalihi Hasunat jami'u ghisarihi Sallu alayhi wa alihi Muhammad, peace be upon his soul The greatest of prophets, Islam was his own we go. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jazakumullahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum.